Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Array Methods 15 for part 5 of module 1. And we have find shortest word amongst mixed elements and find smallest number among mixed elements. So previously we had had uh, arrays that had just you know numbers or just strings or just something and we wanted to do something with it. In this one we have an array that has mixed elements. So um, our course of action is going to be rather similar but we're going to need to make sure that we provide uh, a check for each value to ensure that it is a string in this case and then a number in the next problem. So uh, if the array is empty, it should return an empty string. Expect the given array to have values other than strings. If there are ties, it should return the first element to appear. If the given array contains no strings, it should return an empty string. Okay. Mm hmm. How are we going to do this? So these two make me think that it might be a good idea for us to go through and filter out the uh, string elements first. So let's do that. We'll create a variable called string elements, and we'll set that equal to an array. Then we're going to iterate over our input array. Yes, this would be easier if we were using the higher order function method filter, but we're not going to. Um, if type of the array, the current element, is equal to a string, then we are going to uh, push into our string element. String elements is way too robust. Let's just call it strings. We'll say strings dot push the current array element. And then here we'll have an array of strings. So let's do our edge cases now. The first edge case is going to be if the input array is empty. So if the input array is empty, meaning it has a length of zero, we're just going to return an empty string. And at this point, we can do the exact same thing with our strings array, because if our strings array is empty, that means the initial array did not contain any strings. So we'll return an empty string in that case as well. Now, we can assume that strings is not empty and that it contains some strings. So we'll follow the same method that we've been doing previously for these kind of find shortest or find largest or find smallest. We're going to assign, the we're going to assign shortest to be whatever the first element of our array in question is, in this case, strings. Then we're going to iterate selectively meaning we don't start at zero, we start at one, the rest of the strings array. And once we do that, each time we're gonna want to make sure that we check uh, the length of the current string value. So strings at i dot length. If that is less than shortest dot length, then we know we have a new candidate for the shortest string in our array. So if strings at i dot length is less than shortest dot length. We're going to reassign shortest to be whatever strings at i is. Once we've done all of that, after the iteration completes, shortest will contain our shortest string, and they want us to actually return the string itself. So we'll hop down here, sorry for the awkward scrolling, um, and we'll return shortest. Oh boy. It should return a string. Cannot read property length of undefined on line 20. Uh, strings at i. Length of undefined usually means that we have assigned, um, or we've tried to call length on something that isn't there. So there's the input array. It's r is good. All right. Cool. We'll get to see some debugging. So line 20 is where it's happening. I is equal to 1. Ah, this is, like, let's consider this. It's not going to work in the event that we have one value in our strings array. So what we really need is we need the strings array to be, um, to have at least two values in it. So we're going to throw in another edge case here, and this might help us sort out the situation. We're going to say if strings.length is equal to 1, we just want to return, uh, oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, back up, back up, back up. Uh, line 17, strings at i is incorrect. We don't want to assign it to i because that's going to be uh, strings at undefined, meaning shortest will be undefined, which is why line 20 is going to fail when it says, hey, shortest is undefined, so I can't find the length property of that. This should be zero. So hopefully that's going to sort things out for us. Let's run the test again. Hey, we're in good shape. So let's jump to the next one. 
This one is going to be almost the exact same problem, except instead of filtering out the strings, we're going to filter out the uh, numbers. So if the given array is empty, it should return zero. So that's going to be if array.length is equal to zero, what does it want us to return? Zero. And length is definitely not spelled that way, it's spelled that way. Then we're going to create a variable called nums and set it equal to an empty array. Then we're going to iterate over the input array. And this is, this is us filtering out all non-number elements. So we'll check to make sure if type of the current element of the array is equal to a number, then we are going to push it to our new array, which in this case is called num. So nums.push array at i. And then at this point, nums will have all the numbers in the array. So we'll want to ensure that if nums is of length zero, we know that the initial array had no numbers in it. And in that case, we're going to return zero. And from here, we're going to follow the same methodology we've been following, which is to say variable smallest is equal to the first element in the nums array. We're going to iterate over the rest of the nums array by variable i is equal to 1. i is less than nums.length, length, and then i++. plus plus. Each time we iterate, we're going to want to check to see if the current element, nums at i, is less than our smallest element. In the event that it is, we're going to reassign smallest to be whatever the current element is, which is just, uh, sorry, nums at i. After the iteration completes, smallest will have our smallest value. So we will return smallest. After all of that, run the tests, and we're correct, and that's it for this lesson. So let's have a quick look at all of the code. And awesome. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.